And now uh, we would like to continue uh, the uh, series of presentation uh, with the Hungarian ones. Uh, that is the reason why I uh, invite uh, Professor uh, Peter Kruzlitz uh, from University of uh, Szeged uh, to deliver his presentation. Professor, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. So, we had a long journey today in Central European countries, and now we are coming closer where we are. We arrived in Hungary by the end of the afternoon, and I have the great honor to start the presentation about Hungary. It will be completed by my colleague Norbert Tribble. Uh, actually, I would like first to thank the organizers uh, for uh, this uh, excellent conference. Uh, and also, I would like to thank the colleagues, as I'm a little bit home in this university as well, uh, to come to here, to come to us. Uh, I think it was a very interesting uh, research project, but also, for me, a great chance to meet other colleagues. And I am grateful already for the conversation that we had uh, during the dinner yesterday. And I hope uh, we can uh, continue to work together. I think this is one of the goals also of this kind of research projects. So, as uh, uh, we are two to speak about Hungarian symbols, I have decided, we have decided to divide a little bit the topic in the following way. Uh, Norbert will speak about the protection of symbols and I will uh, speak about their uh, constitutional consecration. Uh, so first, I won't give you the whole list of uh, state, national and community symbols in Hungary. I will only focus on those uh, who appears in the fundamental law of Hungary. And uh, secondly, as uh, we are at the end of a long day, I do not have balls like my colleague Dolibor, but I will try to give you some interesting uh, facts, uh, some uh, Hungarian specialties to say so about uh, constitutional consecration, about constitutional definition of uh, symbols. So first, I would like to speak about a little bit about the definition of, I call them traditional, but we can discuss, of course, what are traditional and what are not traditional symbols, because all the symbols are coming with a tradition, with a history. Then I will uh, try to speak about some special symbols that I have to admit I discovered during this project, as I've read a lot about uh, uh, symbols in Hungary. And uh, finally, if I have time, I would like to speak a little bit about the relation to history, because I think that there is an important uh, symbolic, an important symbolism behind that. Dolibor started with history. I will finish with history. But I'm not related to a, a department of uh, legal, uh, of uh, history of law, sorry. So, for the definition of tradition symbols, I have no, no pictures, unfortunately, but I have quotes from the fundamental law. You have, of course, coat of arms. I won't read the text. And uh, you have the flag. Uh, one interesting fact about the flag that we also have an explanation about what the different colors are standing for. So I think it's uh, something uh, very interesting, and I have read some uh, really interesting articles about what can be the normative content of such a constitutional article. Uh, also, it's interesting because uh, scholars are not always agreeing about the origin of those colors. Uh, for most of them, they are, of course, symbols, as uh, you read, of those different characters, but also coming from the coat of arms, because those are also the colors in our coat of arms. Anyway, we have this explanation in the fundamental law. As you read, strength, loyalty, and hope for uh, our uh, 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 colors. Uh, also, we have an other uh, Hungarian specialty, an interesting uh, 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 paragraph in our fundamental law, 
which gives some flexibility to the use of the coat of arms and the flag. As you can read, it can be used in other historically developed forms as well. I think Norbert will speak a little bit about these other forms that we can also use, even though we have a, a constitutional definition of those traditional uh, uh, state symbols. Then, to continue quickly with other traditional symbols, after the coat of arms and the flag, we have, of course, the national anthem. It's not so complicated to have a constitutional definition. Uh, I told you I won't speak about the origin, but what is interesting with our national anthem, that uh, actually, as maybe you know, uh, we have uh, two of them. And only one of them is written in the Constitution, but it's not a problem to use also another famous poem uh, entitled Sozat of uh, uh, Vörös Marti also as a second uh, anthem, so also a, a, a national symbol, but by costumes and not by constitutional uh, 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 regulation. Also, we have, of course, the national holidays, so we are uh, in the next uh, article of the uh, fundamental law. As uh, maybe also you know, we have uh, three national holidays, and uh, which is interesting, I think, in the constitutional definition of those national holidays, that we also have the explanation in the constitutional text. And uh, this will be already something that I will try to discuss in my last and third chapter about the relation to history. So I think that uh, fundamental law, but I will speak a little bit more about it by the end of my uh, contribution, I think that for the fundamental law of Hungary, history is very important. And history can play an important uh, symbolic role as well, as there is a historical narrative uh, made by our uh, fundamental law. To continue quickly, uh, we have also, I call them special symbols, because I found some uh, very interesting articles discussing about whether or not those can be considered as uh, symbols. But what is sure that they are defined by the Constitution, and uh, most of scholars that I've read consider them also as symbols. We have, uh, first of all, the name of the country. Uh, actually, it was also a question uh, of discussion when the fundamental law uh, was adopted, because uh, it's not with the form of the state that uh, actually the constitutional text, the fundamental law, defined the, uh, the name of our country, as it says, uh, but it is a general uh, verbing, so it is Hungary. And uh, for most of the scholars, the reason is not because we, of course, we haven't changed the form of state or government, but this is because it has also a symbolic meaning as it should represent the continuity of Hungarian statehood. And that's why it was important for uh, uh, the declaration in the constitution. It's interesting because if you look on other constitutions, there are this kind of symbol for the name of the country, but also it can be with the form of government. I mean, for example, French Republic has also a symbolic meaning, but over there the question was to really show the uh, rupture in the history. So we had Ancien Regime and then the Republican Regime. For Hungary, it was the opposite. We call it Hungary to uh, uh, symbolize the uh, uh, continuity. Another interesting fact is about Hungarian language and Hungarian sign language. Many scholars consider also that the constitutional consecration of those means that they can be also considered as a symbol. Hungarian language, but we have heard just Dalibor, so it helps me to uh, be a little bit shorter. The, the specialty, the unicity of the Hungarian language uh, makes it a symbol. Also, you can read in the national vowel I don't want it to put all the constitution on my slides, but if you look for our constitutional preamble, you can also read uh, uh, that uh, uh, for uh, the uh, constitutional text, the unicity, the unique character of the Hungarian language is very important, and they have also added, when they were writing the constitution, the Hungarian sign 
language, which means that it is at the same level considered as a unicity and as that an uh, important uh, uh, symbol of national identity. Even more interestingly, we can read in our fundamental law that the official currency of Hungary shall be the forint. And it was also a, 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 a huge uh, team a question uh, for uh, many discussions when the fundamental law has been adopted, because uh, as you know, Hungary is a member state to European Union, and uh, we made this international engagement when we became a member of the European Union to become one day, of course, there are no deadline for that, uh, a member of the Eurozone. Uh, so of course, when it will come, uh, we had to change the uh, fundamental law. And anyway, in a global financial market, why it's interesting or why it's important or why it's important to constitutionally declare official currency to put such an uh, article in the fundamental law. And uh, many scholars agreed that it is also because of the symbolic role of a national currency. Uh, as you know, I don't want to go to further details about history, but as you know, the question of currency was always uh, closely related to the national sovereignty. So it's also a sign of national independence, and as such, this article is mainly uh, symbolic for most of the interpreters of our uh, uh, fundamental law. So those uh, were some uh, special articles in our fundamental law that can have a symbolic role, and I uh, thought that it was interesting to discuss a little bit about those as well for this conference. And now I will come to the Yes, to the uh, most uh, complicated part of my presentation by the hand, the uh, relation to history. And actually, when I prepared my presentation, I was not aware that it will be an interesting question today. As uh, a new amendment, maybe you know, to fundamental law uh, has been presented yesterday to our National Assembly. And actually, this amendment is partly related to the question, what is our relation to history? And it can be, uh, of course, a scientific question, an academic question for a historian to discuss for historiography, but it can be also a constitutional question. And I think that there is a difference between those two. I mean, fundamental law, for fundamental law, it's, well, it was very important to give a historical narrative, and I think that this historical uh, narrative, a uh, special lecture of the history, has a, a very important uh, a symbolic role. So I've tried, I, don't, I know I don't have uh, many time left, but I tried to give you a few examples about those historical events, historical facts, that have been uh, 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 put in light by the fundamental law uh, to symbolize something. Uh, it can be, of course, different thing. It can be, as uh, usual, the continuity of the state the foundation of the state, which is uh, an important uh, uh, historical event, of course, but for the Constitution, it can be even uh, more important. And it is uh, also uh, symbolic because it's also a question, not only the foundation of a statehood, but a question of uh, choice of values at the same time. And uh, it is in that way that our fundamental law uh, uh, speaks about that. Then there is... Uh, Sorry, I didn't tell you because I wanted to go fast. But those uh, are not articles, but those are uh, different uh, uh, sentences from the preamble, from the national avowal. Uh, then there is this idea of uh, the fight for independence, uh, which uh, uh, comes back also uh, uh, more times in our uh, 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 fundamental law. And uh, the last question which is not really symbolic for me, but for some scholars it has also symbolic meaning. This is for me a more uh, constitutional, material constitutional question. But of course there is this question with the continuity and uh, with uh, the rupture, with the renewal, with a new uh, constitutional regime. And I think that historical narrative is also important uh, for fundamental law in order to play with these two ideas 
in a very interesting uh, 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 and a very strong uh, way, because on one hand, we have uh, this idea of the continuity of statehood, which can be very important, and it has, once again, a material constitutional meaning, for example, with those achievements of historic constitution. And on the other hand, of course, there is this question of the 20th century, a new beginning, uh, which was after the regime changed. So thank you very much for your attention. I hope I could respect the time frame.